Hello, everybody. This is the 64th episode of Coffee with Jody. Jody Ann Johnson here. And today, what we're going to do is talk about the eight lean principles that we've been discussing all month, how they work together, and then how you can begin to implement those in your business. All right, so let's start off with what are the eight lean principles? Just to reiterate, we, we say them every day so that we get them drilled into our head. Um, you know, so I'm going to reiterate them again for you now. The first one is continuous improvement, optimizing the whole, eliminating waste, building quality in, fast delivery, con- creating knowledge, deferring irreversible decisions, and respecting people. If you think about it for a second, continuous improvement and eliminating waste, like they go together really, really nicely. Building quality in and optimizing the whole is looking at how do you take from the very onset of the product or service that you're you're selling and be building quality in from the beginning, optimizing the whole. Giving fast delivery allows you to respect people, respecting your customers, and also to get the feedback for continuous improvement. Deferring irreversible decisions can be like, let's not take an action on this too quickly. Let's do slow incremental improvements over time rather than a sweeping one that may cost us time, money, or resources in terms of people or knowledge. And then when we're creating knowledge, whether it's internal knowledge or uh, benefits for the client so that they have knowledge or even in your industry, you're respecting people and you're actually also creating knowledge. So you can see how they kind of all dance together. They really are a, a dance. And it's not like you do this one and then you do this one and then you do this one and then you do this one. But looking at each of them as integrated ways of being able to apply these principles in your business to create a much more productive, profitable, happy business with engaged employees. I love it. I love this and the way that it all works together. And because uh, we're going to talk about implementing these in your business, we'll see how we can get that done. I think that implementing these principles into your business takes something. First of all, it takes a commitment with not just the leader, but obviously from the leader of the organization, their faith and their belief in these ideas, but also from everyone in the organization. And where they might not have that buy-in at the onset, it can get created by actually practicing the principles. One of the things we did was to have a daily huddle. Our huddle is half an hour and it includes discussions on how we're implementing these principles into our business on a daily basis. It also includes learning. We've been studying and reading and looking at videos and reading books and going to websites to deepen our understanding of this and ask our team members to invest somewhere around 15 or 20 minutes into the learning. Now, some of that can be when they're here, sometimes if they can't get it done when they're here, they do it at home because we have a results only work environment. The deepening of our understanding has largely started with Paul Akers and his, um, his website, paulakers.net, where he has a flurry, like a, just a plethora of resources and they're all free. We started with his book, Banish Sloppiness. And then we moved on to Two Second Lean. In those two books, there's a number of different um, videos and resources that we would also you know, look at. He makes some recommendations of people to look up and to follow, and also some books. We read The Goal, even though The Goal is specifically written about a, a manufacturing production facility. We were looking at how do we map that on to what it is that we do here in our professional services. We've looked at plan view. We've looked at other Six Sigma and lean uh, resources online. Right now we're reading one of Dr. Goldratt's uh, later books called The Choice. 
which is an approach. And I think that the idea of lean as an approach, as a way of thinking about the business, is a really good way to implement these principles into your business. Now, why do it? I think the biggest reason is that it creates an environment of continuous improvement and engagement from the team. Our team is probably more engaged now than they've ever been because we're working on this together and then coming up with like this improvement or that improvement. It's fun, it's exciting, and it's engaging, making the business better, making the service to the clients better. So long and short, the principles are unique and distinct though they dance together and complement one another. And then when you make the decision that you're gonna implement this into your professional services business, feel free to reach out to us. We're creating videos, we're talking about it, we're studying it, and we have some good ideas about how to begin implementing it in your business. You can also look at some of those resources that I mentioned to you. Start with having a conversation about why these principles are important. Paul Akers has a number of different videos on his website that you can watch to get like the world of it. And then start talking about it. One pitfall that I've seen in our implementation and I've heard about it in other organizations, including uh, Paul Akers uh, business, is the tendency to want to go in and make sweeping changes rather than the small incremental changes that allow is to build on something and create momentum. We keep kind of like having to go, no, 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 just invest 15 minutes, just invest 15 minutes. And those small incremental changes over time really do add up as, as we've seen here in our business since April of last year, so 10, 11 months now. With that, I wish you all the success in the world. Oh yeah, one last thing. On the Shoulders of Giants was a paper that Dr. Goldratt wrote. In it, he talked about the importance of understanding that you can't translate what Toyota did to another business environment because the environments and the constraints in the environment and the people in that environment are different. Toyota made all of their uh, knowledge available to anyone. Competitors could go in and walk through their plant. All of their content was in the public domain. But when Hitachi went, and uh, who makes tools, went to implement it, they had a really hard time implementing it because the environment that they're working at, the number of SKUs that they had and so on, were quite different than Toyota's. So you've got to take into consideration that what's unique about your organization. And what that means is you and your team are going to have to do the critical thinking of how can this apply to our business, to our environment, with our team, with our core competencies, and embrace that it's a continuous and never-ending improvement rather than a sweeping change. I hope and trust that you got value from this short series on lean principles. And if you got value from this particular video, then please like it, share it, and subscribe. And feel free to reach out. Reach out to me, Jody Johnson at Action Coach Team Sage. Leave a comment, we'll respond. Go to the website. You can reach out to us at Action Coach Team Sage in any way that works for you. And we're happy to give a complimentary session that you can then think through strategically how could you begin implementing this in your business. That's it. Bye for now.